Global warming recent climate change is dangerous in Tuvalu since the average height of the islands is less than 2 meters 6.6 feet above sea level with the highest point of Niulakita being about 4.6 meters 15 feet above sea level Tuvalu Islands have increased in size between 1971 and 2014 during a period of global warming over four decades, there had been a net increase in land area in Tuvalu of 73.5 hectares 2.9%, although the changes are not uniform, with 74% increasing and 27% decreasing in size. The sea level at the Funafuti tide gauge has risen at 3.9 mm per year, which is approximately twice the global average. Tuvalu could be one of the first nations to experience the effects of sea level rise. Not only could parts of the island be flooded but the rising saltwater table could also destroy deep rooted food crops such as coconut, pulaka, and taro. Research from the University of Auckland suggests that Tuvalu may remain habitable over the next century, but as of March 2018 Anele Sopoaga, the Prime Minister of Tuvalu, stated that Tuvalu is not expanding and has gained no additional habitable land. Anele Sopoaga, has also said that evacuating the islands is the last resort. Topic. Climate systems that affect Tuvalu Tuvalu participates in the operations of the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Programme SPREP. The climate of the Pacific region at the equator is influenced by a number of factors, the science of which is the subject of continuing research. The SPREP described the climate of Tuvalu as being The sea level in Tuvalu varies as a consequence of a wide range of atmospheric and oceanographic influences. The 2011 report of the Pacific Climate Change Science Programme published by the Australian Government, describes a strong zonal east to west sea level slope along the equator, with sea level west of the international date line 180 degrees longitude being about a half metre higher than found in the eastern equatorial Pacific and South American coastal regions. The trade winds that push surface water westward create this zonal tilting of sea level on the equator. Below the equator a higher sea level can also be found about 20 degrees to 40 degrees south. Tuvalu is spread out from 6 degrees to 10 degrees south. The Pacific Climate Change Science Program Report 2011 describes the year-by-year -year volatility in the sea level as resulting from the El Niño Southern Oscillation ENSO. The Pacific inter decadal oscillation is a climate switch phenomenon that results in changes from periods of La Nina to periods of El Niño. This has an effect on sea levels as El Niño events can actually result in sea levels falling by 11 inches centimeters as compared to the sea level during our La Nina events. For example, in 2000 there was a switch from periods of downward pressure of El Niño on sea levels to an upward pressure of La Niña on sea levels, which upward pressure causes more frequent and higher high tide levels. The perigean spring tide, often called a king tide can result in seawater flooding low-lying areas of the islands of Tuvalu. Topic. Measuring climate change effects in Tuvalu In 1978 a tide gauge was installed at Funafuti by the University of Hawaii. 
However, the uncertainty as to the accuracy of the data from this tide gauge resulted in a modern Aquatrack acoustic gauge being installed in 1993 by the Australian National Tidal Facility as part of the AUSED sponsored South Pacific Sea Level and Climate Monitoring Project. The highest elevation is 4.6 metres 15 feet above sea level on Niulakita, which gives Tuvalu the second lowest maximum elevation of any country after the Maldives. However, the highest elevations are typically in narrow storm dunes on the ocean side of the islands which are prone to over-topping in tropical cyclones, such as occurred with Cyclone Bebe. In March 2015 the storm surge created by Cyclone Pam resulted in waves of 3 to 5 meters (9.8 to 16.4 feet) breaking over the reef of the outer islands caused damage to houses, crops and infrastructure. On Nui the sources of fresh water were destroyed or contaminated. Tuvalu is also affected by perigean spring tide events, often called a king tide, which raise the sea level higher than a normal high tide. The highest peak tide recorded by the Tuvalu Meteorological Service was 3.4 meters, 11 feet on the 24th of February 2006 and again on the 19th of February 2015. As a result of historical sea level rise, the king tide events lead to flooding of low-lying areas, which is compounded when sea levels are further raised by La Nina effects or local storms and waves. In the future, sea level rise may threaten to submerge the nation entirely as it is estimated that a sea level rise of 20 to 40 centimeters, 7.9 to 15.7 inches in the next 100 years could make Tuvalu uninhabitable. The atolls have shown resilience to gradual sea level rise with atolls and reef islands being able to grow under current climate conditions by generating sufficient sand and broken coral that accumulates and gets dumped on the islands during cyclones. There remains the risk that the dynamic response of atolls and reef islands does not result in stable islands as tropical cyclones can strip the low-lying islands of their vegetation and soil. Tepuka Vili Vili Islet of Funafuti Atoll was devastated by Cyclone Meli in 1979, with all its vegetation and most of its sand swept away during the cyclone. Vasafua Islet, part of the Funafuti Conservation Area, was severely damaged by Cyclone Pam in 2015. The coconut palms were washed away, leaving the islet as a sandbar. The effect of Cyclone Pam, which did not pass directly over the islands, shows that Tuvaluans are exposed to storm surges causing damage to their houses and crops, and also the risk of water-borne disease as a consequence of contamination of the water supplies. Gradual sea level rise also allows for coral polyp activity to raise the atolls with the sea level. However, if the increase in sea level occurs at faster rate as compared to coral growth, or if polyp activity is damaged by ocean acidification, then the resilience of the atolls and reef islands is less certain. There is further contention as to whether saltwater encroachment that is destroying the gardens for pulaka, taro, and coconut palms is the consequence of changes in the sea level, or the consequence of the fresh water being extracted from the freshwater lens in the sub-surface of the atoll or the consequence of the creation of the borrow pits, which are the result of the extraction of coral to build the runway at Funafuti during World War II. The investigation of groundwater dynamics of Fongafale Islet, Funafuti, show that tidal forcing results in salt water contamination of the surficial aquifer during spring tides. The degree of aquifer salinization depends on the specific topographic characteristics and the hydrologic controls in the sub-surface of the atoll. 
About half of Fonga Fale Islet is reclaimed swamp that contains porous, highly permeable coral blocks that allow the tidal forcing of salt water. Increases in the sea level will exacerbate the aquifer salinization as the result of increases in tidal forcing. Topic: <laughs> Concerns over long-term habitability. Existing scientific narratives suggest that Tuvalu may become uninhabitable as a consequence of rising sea levels, however results of research from the University of Auckland challenge the existing narratives by showing that island expansion has been the most common physical alteration throughout Tuvalu over the past four decades. The results challenge the existing perceptions of island loss due to rising sea levels by showing that the islands are dynamic features that will persist as sites for habitation over the next century and allows for alternate opportunities for adaptation rather than a forced exodus. Despite these findings, the Prime Minister of Tuvalu maintains that Tuvalu is not expanding and that the expansion of Tuvaluan shoreline did not equate to habitable land. <inaudible> Estimates as to changes in the sea level relative to the islands of Tuvalu The Permanent Service for Mean Sea Level PSMSL analysis of data from Funafuti is that the sea level has risen at 3.9 mm per year, which is approximately twice the global average. Sea level observation has been made at two at locations within the Funafuti Lagoon. The University of Hawaii Sea Level Center UHSLC operated a tide gauge from November 1979 until December 2001. Since June 1993 the National Tidal Center of the Australian Bureau of Meteorology has operated a Aquatrack acoustic gauge. The two records were synthesized into a single data source by averaging the difference between the two records over the period during which both gauges operated simultaneously. There are observable changes that have occurred over the last 10 to 15 years that show Tuvaluans that there have been changes to sea levels. Those observable changes include sea water bubbling up through the porous coral rock to form pools on each high tide and flooding of low-lying areas including the airport on a regular basis during spring tides and king tides. Topic: 2011 report of the Pacific Climate Change Science Program. The 2011 report of the Pacific Climate Change Science Programme of Australian concludes in relation to Tuvalu that over the course of the 21st century, surface air temperature and sea surface temperature are projected to continue to increase very high confidence, annual and seasonal mean rainfall is projected to increase high confidence, the intensity and frequency of days of extreme heat are projected to increase very high confidence, the intensity and frequency of days of extreme rainfall are projected to increase high confidence, the incidence of drought is projected to decrease moderate confidence, tropical cyclone numbers are projected to decline in the southeast Pacific Ocean Basin 0 to 40 degrees south, 170 degrees east to 130 degrees west moderate confidence, ocean acidification is projected to continue very high confidence, mean sea level rise is projected to continue very high confidence. Topic. National response to the challenges faced by Tuvalu 
Tuvalu faces challenges which will be exacerbated by climate change, those challenges are I. Coastal erosion, saltwater intrusion and increasing vector and water-borne diseases due to sea level rise E. Inadequate potable water due to less rainfall and prolonged droughts E. Pulaka pit salinization due to saltwater intrusion, and IV. Decreasing fisheries population Topic: The National Advisory Council on Climate Change. In a speech on the 16th of September 2005 to the 60th session of the UN General Assembly, Prime Minister Martia Toafa emphasized the impact of climate change as a broader security issue which relates to environmental security. Living in a very fragile island environment, our long-term security and sustainable development is closely linked to issues of climate change, preserving biodiversity, managing our limited forests and water resources. The threat of climate change to the islands is not a dominant motivation for migration as Tuvaluans appear to prefer to continue living in Tuvalu for reasons of lifestyle, culture and identity. In 2013 Anele Sopoaga, the Prime Minister of Tuvalu, said that relocating Tuvaluans to avoid the impact of sea level rise should never be an option because it is self-defeating in itself. For Tuvalu I think we really need to mobilize public opinion in the Pacific as well as in the rest of world to really talk to their lawmakers to please have some sort of moral obligation and things like that to do the right thing. The Economics of Climate Change in the Pacific 2013 report of the Asian Development Bank estimates the range of potential economic impacts of climate change for agriculture, fisheries, tourism, coral reefs, and human health in the Pacific region, with agriculture production, such as taro, particularly vulnerable to the effect of climate change. The Pacific countries are projected incur economic losses in the range of 4.6% to 12.7% of the region's annual GDP equivalent by 2100, with the degree of severity changing with different CO2 emission scenarios. Tuvalu has said it wants all its energy to come from renewable sources by 2020. On 16 January 2014 Prime Minister Anele Sopoaga established the National Advisory Council on Climate Change, which functions are to identify actions or strategies, to achieve energy efficiencies, to increase the use of renewable energy, to encourage the private sector and NGOs to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, to ensure a whole-of-government response to adaptation and climate change-related disaster risk reduction, and to encourage the private sector and NGOs to develop locally appropriate technologies for adaptation and climate change mitigation reductions in greenhouse gas at the 20th conference of parties to the UN framework convention on climate change in December 2014 at Lima Peru Sopoaga said climate change is the single greatest challenge facing my country it is threatening the livelihood, security and well-being of all Tuvaluans. T. Kakiga 3, National Strategy for Sustainable Development 2016-2020, TK3, sets out the development agenda of the government of Tuvalu. TK3 includes new strategic areas in addition to the 8 identified in TK2. The additional strategic areas are climate change, environment, migration and urbanization, and oceans and seas.
Topic: Tuvalu's role at the Copenhagen Climate Change Conference 2009. In December 2009 the islands stalled talks at United Nations Climate Change Conference in Copenhagen, fearing some other developing countries were not committing fully to binding deals on a reduction in carbon emission, their chief negotiator stated. Tuvalu is one of the most vulnerable countries in the world to climate change, and our future rests on the outcome of this meeting. When the conference failed to reach a binding, meaningful agreement, Tuvalu's representative Ian Fry said, It looks like we are being offered 30 pieces of silver to betray our people and our future. Our future is not for sale. I regret to inform you that Tuvalu cannot accept this document. Fry's speech to the conference was a highly impassioned plea for countries around the world to address the issues of man made global warming resulting in climate change. The five minute speech addressed the dangers of rising sea levels to Tuvalu and the world. In his speech Fry claimed man-made global warming to be currently the greatest threat to humanity and ended with an emotional the fate of my country rests in your hands topic <laughs> <laughs> climate change leadership and the majuro declaration 2013 In November 2011, Tuvalu was one of the eight founding members of Polynesian Leaders Group, a regional grouping intended to cooperate on a variety of issues including culture and language, education, responses to climate change, and trade and investment. Tuvalu participates in the Alliance of Small Island States AOSIS, which is a coalition of small island and low-lying coastal countries that have concerns about their vulnerability to the adverse effects of global climate change. The Sopoaga Ministry led by Anele Sopoaga made a commitment under the Majuro Declaration, which was signed on 5 September 2013, to implement power generation of 100% renewable energy between 2013 and 2020. This commitment is proposed to be implemented using solar PV of demand and biodiesel 5% of demand. The feasibility of wind power generation will be considered. Marshall Islands President Christopher Loeck presented the Majuro Declaration to the UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon during General Assembly Leaders Week from 23 September 2013. The Majuro Declaration is offered as a Pacific gift to the UN Secretary-General in order to catalyze more ambitious climate action by world leaders beyond that achieved at the December 2009 United Nations Climate Change Conference COP15. On 29 September 2013 the Deputy Prime Minister Vete Sakayo concluded his speech to the general debate of the 68th session of the United Nations General Assembly with an appeal to the world, "'Please save Tuvalu against climate change. Save Tuvalu in order to save yourself, the world.'" Topic: 2015 United Nations Climate Change Conference (COP21) and the Paris Agreement. Topic: <laughs> Commitment under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change (UNFCCC) 1994. 
On 27 November 2015 the government of Tuvalu announced its intended nationally determined contributions NDCs in relation to the reduction of greenhouse gases GHGs under provisions of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change UNFCCC, which became effective on 21 March 1994. Topic: Tuvalu's COP21 goal of global temperature below 1.5 degrees Celsius relative to pre-industrial levels. Prime Minister Anele Sopoaga said at the 2015 United Nations Climate Change Conference COP21 that the goal for COP21 should a global temperature goal of below 1.5 degrees Celsius relative to pre-industrial levels, which is the position of the Alliance of Small Island States. Ms. Pepetua Latasi, the director of the Department of Environment, was the chief negotiator for Tuvalu. Prime Minister Sopoaga said in his speech to the meeting of heads of state and government, The countries participating in the Paris Agreement agreed to reduce their carbon output as soon as possible and to do their best to keep global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius." Enele Sopoaga described the important outcomes of the Paris Agreement as including the standalone provision for assistance to small island states and some of the least developed countries for loss and damage resulting from climate change and the ambition of limiting temperature rise to 1.5 degrees by the end of the century. Topic: Tuvalu Survival Fund (TSF). The Tuvaluan government established the Tuvalu Survival Fund (TSF) in 2016 to finance climate change programs and as a fund available to respond promptly to natural disasters such as tropical cyclones. Contributions are made to the TSF from the national budget. Topic: The National Adaptation Program of Action and the Tuvalu Coastal Adaptation Project. Tuvalu's National Adaptation Programme of Action NAPA, describes a response to the climate change problem as using the combined efforts of several local bodies on each island that will work with the local community leaders the Falecaupole. The main office, named the Department of Environment, is responsible for coordinating the non-governmental organizations, religious bodies, and stakeholders. Each of the named groups are responsible for implementing Tuvalu's NAPA, the main plan to adapt to the adverse effects of human use and climate change. In 2015, the United Nations Development Programme (UNDP) assisted the government of Tuvalu to acquire MV Talamoana, a 30-meter vessel that will be used to implement Tuvalu's National Adaptation Programme of Action to transport government officials and project personnel to the outer islands in August 2017 the government of Tuvalu along and the UNDP launched the Tuvalu Coastal Adaptation Project TCAP that is financed with 36 million dollars from the Green Climate Fund and 2.9 million parangas from the government of Tuvalu the TCAP focuses on construction works to defend infrastructure including roads, schools, hospitals and government buildings, over a period of seven years. The goal of the Tuvalu Coastal Adaptation Project is to build coastal resilience in three of Tuvalu's nine inhabited islands and to manage coastal inundation risks by reducing the impact of increasingly intensive wave action. Topic: 
External links Tikakiga 3, National Strategy for Sustainable Development 2016-2020 Talifa. Tuvalu Met Service South Pacific Sea Level and Climate Monitoring Project SPSLCMP. Island Climate Update, NIWA National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research of New Zealand Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Programme Talanoa Dialogue Portal United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change UNFCCC Tuvalu's options on setting up defences against the rising sea the Cultural Impacts of Climate Change 2012, PhD dissertation, University of Hawaii at Manoa by Laura Katie Corlew Small is Beautiful a lobby group set up to help the island nation use climate change, Tuvalu, ACF news source Environment, Tiny Tuvalu Fights for Its Literal Survival IPS News Video the 28th of September 2013 Address by His Excellency Vete Palakua Sakayo, Deputy Prime Minister of Tuvalu at the General Debate of the 68th Session of the General Assembly of the United Nations King Tide, Funafuti Storm Video 2005 YouTube Video 1024 number 90 king tide attacks in tuvalu titv weekly youtube video topic filmography documentary films about climate change and tuvalu Paradise Domain, Tuvalu, Director, Yost de Haas, Bullfrog Films, TVE 2001, 25 to 52 minutes, YouTube video. Tuvalu Island Tales, A Tale of Two Islands, Director, Mitchell Lipich, 34 minutes, YouTube video. The Disappearing of Tuvalu, Trouble in Paradise 2004 by Christopher Horner and Gillian Le Gallic. Paradise Drowned, Tuvalu, The Disappearing Nation 2004 written and produced by Wayne Terrell. Directed by Mike O'Connor, Savannah Jones Middleton and Wayne Terrell. Going Under 2004 by Franny Armstrong, Spanner Films. Before the Flood, Tuvalu 2005 by Paul Lindsay, Storyville, BBC4. Time and Tide 2005 by Julie Byer and Josh Saltzman, Wavecrest Films. Tuvalu, That Sinking Feeling 2005 by Elizabeth Pollock from PBS Rough Cut Atlantis Approaching 2006 by Elizabeth Pollock, Blue Marble Productions King Tide, The Sinking of Tuvalu 2007 by Jurian Buij. Tuvalu, director, Aaron Smith, Hungry Beast Program, ABC June 2011, 640 minutes, YouTube video. Tuvalu, Renewable Energy in the Pacific Islands Series, 2012, a production of the Global Environment Facility, GEF, United Nations Development Program, UNDP, and SPREP 10 minutes, YouTube video. Thula Tuvalu 2014 by Matthias von Gunten, Hesgroitet Film, Odyssey Film